That day, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration issued a single-line notice, application rejected. Typically, when a drug developer submits a marketing application to the FDA, the documents are formally accepted first, followed by months of review leading to an approval or rejection decision. However, in this case, the process didn't even reach the starting line. The application was denied before any formal review could begin. The company receiving this notice was Immunity Bio, a U.S.-based immuno-oncology firm. The subject was its flagship product, Anctiva. Based on an interleukin-15 superagonist mechanism, this drug is designed to simultaneously activate natural killer cells and T-cells while avoiding excessive suppression by regulatory T-cells, an advanced design in the field of immunotherapy. The drug received formal FDA approval in April 2024. The approved indication was for Bacillus calmet garin BCG, unresponsive, non-muscle invasive bladder cancer with carcinoma in situ, with or without papillary tumors, under the condition of co-administration with BCG. Commercialization moved rapidly. From mid-2024, insurance coverage expanded across the U.S., and in January 2025, the drug was assigned a permanent J-code for reimbursement, significantly improving hospital access to prescriptions. The results were reflected in the numbers. In the first half of 2025, Anctiva's unit sales surged more than 246% compared to the previous half year, and quarterly revenue reached approximately $26 million. For a single product to accelerate this rapidly post-approval is highly unusual, even in the U.S. market. Under these conditions, Immunity Bio submitted a supplementary application to expand the indication from the original patient population to include those with papillary tumors only. Given the similarities in pathophysiology, mechanism, and administration between the original and target populations, such label expansions are usually accepted for review and then processed with additional data if needed. That is the industry norm. But in this case, the FDA responded with an outright refusal to accept the application. The key point here is that this was not a rejection after review. It was a decision not to even begin the review. This is a highly irregular procedure, and the rationale behind it has not been officially disclosed. This mystery suggests several possibilities. The first hypothesis is that the FDA may have considered the papillary-only patient group as a fundamentally separate indication from the previously approved one. However, given the high pathophysiological similarity, this interpretation lacks logical grounding. The second possibility is a technical issue within the submitted clinical data or its analysis, but in most cases, the FDA issues a request for additional information rather than refusing the application outright. Refusal to accept is rare and typically occurs with entirely new drug applications, not with supplemental applications for already approved therapies. A third theory is that internal FDA standards may have recently shifted or passed issues during Anctiva's original review, such as the manufacturing facility's quality control failure, may have weighed more heavily than expected. While that earlier issue was tied to third-party contract manufacturing and not the drug's efficacy or safety, it may have left a lasting impression on regulators. In response, Immunity Bio promptly requested a Type A meeting with the FDA to understand the basis for the refusal and to discuss the potential path forward. But this uncertainty is a growing concern, especially for a company heavily dependent on a single product for revenue. On top of this, another puzzling move emerged, the timing of capital raises. In April and July 2025, Immunity Bio executed two direct stock offerings, raising approximately $75 million and $80, $80 million, respectively. These came at a time when Anctiva's commercialization was accelerating and quarterly revenues had surpassed $43 million. Such capital raises are typically seen when a company is experiencing cash flow concerns or is entering a costly new phase of operations. Immunity Bio stated that the proceeds would support global expansion and clinical scaling, but the timing suggests possible defensive posturing amid growing regulatory uncertainty. In this context, the manufacturing system becomes an essential variable. Anctiva's earlier complete response letter in 2023 was due to quality issues at an external contract manufacturing site. Since then, the company has not publicly clarified whether it has shifted to in-house production or changed vendors. 
With demand rising sharply, any supply chain bottlenecks could become a major operational risk. Meanwhile, Immunity Bio has also pursued global expansion. In January 2025, the European Medicines Agency formally accepted its marketing application, and in July, the UK Regulatory Authority granted approval, the first such authorization outside the US. However, unlike the US, European markets require separate health technology assessments and reimbursement negotiations even after regulatory approval. As of now, no major European countries have confirmed reimbursement, leaving commercial visibility low. Taken together, the mysteries surrounding Immunity Bio currently center around three critical questions. First, under what conditions might the papillary-only indication be resubmitted and accepted for review by the FDA? Second, can the manufacturing and quality systems keep up with accelerating sales growth without disruption? Third, when and under what terms will the European market begin translating approvals into real revenue? These three questions go far beyond regulatory minutia. They could reshape the long-term valuation and profitability structure of Immunity Bio itself. From an investor's perspective, the current numbers may look attractive, but failing to examine the conditions that sustain those numbers would be a misstep. Valuester is also actively collecting tip-offs about stocks and crypto projects, listed, unlisted, or pre-IPO, that you, our viewers, want to see investigated. Drop your ideas in the comments, and we'll cover them in future content. This was Valuester.